were writing a code to check, uh, okay, to classify uh, whether the input to data is a circle or a loop. So we, we wanted to uh, classify. That's our uh, idea, right? So uh, let us start. Okay, it has lost the word space, so we have to start. Uh, we just have to run. So let's quickly go through uh, uh, section by section uh, just to see that. Okay, this is just clearing section. So here, what we did, we uh, have the images inside the folder called ellipse, ellipsis, right? It will load that, it will create an image data store, and it will hold the number of uh, count in each of the classes automatically. Okay, so I'll run that, okay, run in advance, right? Uh, we try to plot the graphs over here, right? Uh, every uh, yeah, randomly selected images will be plotted. Okay, so I just run that and I'll skip the output. Then uh, when we move ahead, right, uh, we uh, separate the out of the images present in our data set, we split, right, into training data and testing data at random, right? So split each label present in the IMDS. So fact, uh, at what percentage, percentage is equal to 0.8, which is defined over here. That 0.8 means 80%, okay, random. So it will do that. So that's done. So then uh, we uh, defined our layers, right? So input layer dependent on what is the, whatever is the size of your image. So much. So that's the size. Okay, size of the image is defined here. So in this case, it is uh, I think twenty eight into thirty two into thirty two. Sorry. Okay. So it will create that. Then you see the standard uh, CNN layers, batch normalization, ReLU. Uh, and max pooling, right? This is repeated twice. Each time we are trying to increase the, right, number of filters, right? So 16, then 32, and so on, right? So if this, uh, so what is the necessity of this, uh, right? Uh, how do I decide whether I need to add one more layer or not, right? Random, normally we keep at least two layers, right? Uh, two or three layers should be sufficient initially. Right after this, right, if you don't get a good uh, accuracy, right, uh, maybe you let's assume that after this, using these three layers for training and testing, if you get your accuracy as just say uh, 80, 70 percent, 60 percent, or right, like that, you can keep adding the layers so that it becomes up to 90 percent or so. Okay, so that's how. So, what you should repeat, you should keep repeating these four layers, right? Keep, keep on repeating, right? So after the last convolution layer, right, you don't put a max pooling, you directly go for a fully connected layer. Then we have studied in the basics that I have to use a soft max layer as the activation function. So in order to declare that this is going to give you final output, you have to name it as a classification layer. All right, so then if you want to visualize the layers you defined, you have to use, right, what is called as a layer graph. Right, so layer graph uh, generates a handle that handles the layer graph. Right, so whatever layers we defined, you you pass it through a layer graph. Give any name here, then you try to plot that. Okay, so once you do that, you will see uh, another graph corresponding to that. Okay, so anyway, I skip the output now. We already have seen that. Right, then now you see you uh, you later on we check that. Uh, how to define what is called as the uh, options. Without options, right, MATLAB will not train, you need to specify. So we saw various algorithms present over here. What is the initial rate, right? Mini batch size, whatever you want, you can define, okay? So normally this will be a two to the power number, okay? Maximum number of epochs, shuffle, right? Uh, validation data, which one you want to do that. So uh, we can actually validate that with our uh, the training data as, as well as the testing data. Testing data is actually used for testing. So what we do now, we we'll slightly modify. IMDS train, I'm going to put, okay? Because uh, otherwise it, it becomes uh, the testing itself. We'll do the training part and I'll increase the number of uh, the mini batch size. So say 32, okay? So it's a four times faster now, okay? It, uh, so, so this is how it gets trained now, right? Now, so once this is done, now now the training starts. 
and want to show you the so since we have done the verbose right verbose actually generates the table so that we can visualize the training process in the command window all right let's let me start right Just run this, so run the section. So as the okay, that's the previous section. So it's not selected yet. Okay, now it's not it. So we should be able to uh, visualize that uh, the training options come into picture, uh, and it will also show you. Uh, training process in the form of uh, what is called as the, uh, a table. All right. So you can see the table, right? All right. Okay. So this is how it happens. Right. So all the five epochs will be shown. Also, I can actually show you the training progress also. Okay, hope uh, the training, the thing is also visible. Okay. So let it finish the complete process. And Okay, so as you can see, the training finished and it says that the validation frequency is 100%. Right? And uh, now you see, compared to our previous training, this is faster, right? That is because of so one fact uh, that we change the mini batch size. You see, the batch size has been increased here, right? I made the batch size larger. It was eight earlier, which, that's why every eight it used to train, then test then do a validation not exactly testing right so so in the sense right now it is doing for 32 every 32 images it will it will train and do a validation but earlier this was happening four times within this time because eight 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 so four times uh, there was training and validation that was taking more time okay that's one point which, which anyway when i share you the code you can do the test you can you can vary all these parameters right so instead of five epochs you can actually change to lesser than that which will be much faster but maybe the efficiency is going to vary right so validation frequency uh, so the last time when we ran that ran for almost 10 to 15 minutes that code training because this was just two over there okay validation every every two image you will do a validation Right? So that's why it was taking that much time. So anyway, you can make it even bigger, even larger. Okay, fine. So you have all these options available. According to that, it got trained and right, the net will contain the details of the network which it has trained so far. Okay, so let's just open that to see. You can see here, this is the net which we are talking about. So it's a one into one network. So as per our definition, it has so many layers. So you see the layers are defined in the same fashion. Try right? to open if possible, yeah. So you can see that it opens up. All right, so the very various parameters of that particular layer is there. So similarly, you can actually open and check, right? What are the various, you see, you see the weight is actually, you can, it's visible there, right? You can see that the weights are also these are the optimum weights after training, right? So everything is available, you can actually open and see, right? So what are the, uh, the biases of each of those layers? That's also visible, okay? Then, right, I think, 
other side in the not so important but these are this is what we studied in theory right weight gets updated bias gets updated so updated final value is what you can see over here okay so like this right okay actually this was only first convolution layer what happens at the other convolution layer you can still check okay so let's look one of them uh, the other layer right so this layer is a batch normalization layer right you can see that what are the various parameters available right so batch normalization layer has a scaling factor you can see the scaling factor of each one of them it modifies initially it would be one as the training progresses it is going to change okay then relu layer it's simply an activation function okay All right so there we don't get any details like that then you can see the max pooling layer as well right the pool size is 2 comma 2 stride is also 2 comma 2 as we have defined it's exactly creating right that particular layer so convolution 2d layer right you see that size is different now so you are going to have different weights here okay it's a so many layers are there. as as many layers you define so many layers will be created okay so 16 layers so you can see that 16 different sets of pools okay like that you have the 16 different sets of the biases as well okay like that you can check each and everything so the one which we have not seen is this one this is not seen so far it's a fully connected layer <clears throat> so fully connected layer you can see the number of weights here this is two cross two thousand something right so two zero four eight right so huge right and so many number of biases will also be right for there are two uh, these things right two outputs right so all the each output gets uh, each output neuron gets one bias so the values of the bias bias is uh, like this okay so you can see that right after this layer we have a softmax layer which is activation function so you don't get any other details about that it's simply a activation function then the classification so it's actually generate depending upon the numerical value given to the input it generates either zero or one as the output. it converts your input into zeros or one that's why this is the final layer which is called as a categorical output. it generates a categorical output you see it has actually a loss function that is a cross entropy right we already have seen that right it is going to use that to generate that because when you have multiple outputs one of the output should not affect the other two outputs let's assume three outputs are there one value should not affect the other right so you have we have seen that in the theory part right so it uses that way to get this right so this is what we had done so far and the uh, uh, it's executing as far now right even it's giving in the in the validation phase we can see that it is coming up to 100 percent the activity okay but that is not enough for us because uh, what we want is we want to test this for the testing input right we have separately kept the testing uh, data set right? you see here imds test right it's not used anywhere so Correct. So that's a remaining 20% of the data set which we have. Now we want to train that, test that. So, okay, so let's move on to that part of the code. Okay, now, right. So for that, we uh, use what is called as a, the, there is a built in command called classify. We will use that. Okay, so. Uh, the predicted predicted output will be equal to so classify it's a command right using which the uh, machine will try to do the classification you have to tell that what is your input okay sorry what is your network so my network is in the name net right that's a network which is trained then you tell uh, then you specify uh, which input you want to test. So the test is nothing but, I think we gave a name, I forgot. IMDS test, I guess. Uh, that? Yeah, this one. Okay, so let me just, and this is IMDS test. 
I am asking the machine to do the classification like this. Let's see whether this runs or do we need anything else, any, something extra to do. Okay, let's just check. Uh, run a section. Yeah, actually you can see that it, there, is, there is output coming here. You can see all zeros and ones are there, right? So this is the output actually, okay? Because since I didn't press the semicolon, it's giving that. Okay, but I don't want to see this because this is not going to help me. I, all zeros and ones means doesn't, we, we don't understand it. Okay, so let's, let's look at the test labels also. Then we compare, okay? So see IMDS test is there, right? So IMDS test, we, we'll, we'll, we go into that uh, variable and we'll check, okay? Let's see IMDS test. I'll open that. Now you see it actually has uh, what is called as 400 different images and 400 different labels created. Correct? So I'll open that now, right? When I open this, you see there are 400 different uh, ones or zeros. You can see, I think this looks like first 200 come as one, the remaining 200s are zeros. Saying that out of your 400 images, I'll show you the images. Images, images are not directly present. They are present in the form of the locations, address, right? So what is the size? If you if you come down to check, uh, you can see that there are totally four hundred images image in the image uh, IMDS data store. Out of these four hundred images, which image is what you can understand by looking at the label. So label says that okay. So up to two hundred, they are class one. Two hundred one onwards till four hundred, it is class zero. This is what this is for our reference. Okay, machine does not know anything about this. Machine has no idea. Okay, because I am giving the IMDS test right now only to the machine. So I'm I am passing this IMDS test so that the machine can classify and it generates an output. But I have to check this output with something so that I can compare, right? So that what I'm going to compare, I'm going to compare this with the say. I'll create a variable called testing uh, labels. In the sense, the label of the testing data, where is it present? It is present inside the IMDS test. It, it's a structure, right? So you access using a dot notation, call it as a label, right? Why I'm using this? Because if you open the IMDS test, this is the data store in which I need to access this label, right? So labels is the na variable name for this categorical label, right? Which is, the, which is what I'm going to use for the comparison. Machine says these are your outputs, but the actual outputs are this. You can even call this name as ground truth, okay? Fine. So I get the labels, right? Now I need to calculate the accuracy of the classification. So how do you do that, right? I just have to check, right, whether the predicted output is equal to testing label. Are you okay? If it is equal, if the complete 400 uh, testing labels match with the predicted output, then you see accuracy is, <clears throat> accuracy is 100%, <laughs> right? That, that's the point, but if there is something, something is missing, like out of 400, say 380 are correct, remaining 20 are wrong, then it should indicate in my accuracy, correct? So what I do, first I will, I, I, I'll calculate, I, I'll show you something here, right? So I'll just check, I'll do one thing. I'll check that whether the predicted output is equal to testing labels like this. It's actually, I, I'm, I'm checking condition, that's a Boolean answer. I'm expecting a Boolean answer, yes or no. Right, I will simply check, right, the, the predicted, say, output equal to equal to, right? If a single equal to, it is assignment. Now I'm checking that, okay? So that's a conditional state, equal to. So I just want to check, right, the testing labels, all right?
Check which is that. All right, let's uh, let me run this because that says that it is not available. Right, let me simply run this section. IMDS test, it says that it's not having LAPELS, it's there. Let's check that. LABELS. Okay. LABELS. So that's it. Okay, so that's why it's giving error. Now let's run this on the section. And now I check this condition once again right you see it say it is the it says one and zero comes into picture you can see that right so one one means it is true zero means it is false somewhere just now i saw it zero you see here it means it is false in the sense at that location the testing label uh, sorry uh, sorry the predicted output is not equal to this now i want to find how many ones are there one means it is true Correct. That is what I need for accuracy. Correct. So uh, let me let me let me let me do another. So I want to get the sum of uh, sum of the predicted the predicted of. equals to equals to uh, testing I will simply try to calculate how many ones are uh, predicted what was my mistake P -R -E -D -I -C -T. okay let's check this yeah 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 sorry sorry that that's a mistake now you see out of 400 300 ones are there. You see, only one mistake. The machine has done only one mistake. I got this. So, so many correct answers divided by total answers is what is your accuracy, right? So, we can use this equation. So, accuracy can be defined in this fashion. So, it's a sum of the, the predicted Sum of the predicted output equals to equals to the testing labels. This is what gives me 399. I have to divide this by the total length of right, the test labels. Okay, so uh, I can write the number numerical length I want. So N U M E L. It's a numerical length of the testing so how, how many data you have used for testing that's what is this okay that gives you the accuracy all right so let's try to run this anyway i know that 399 out of 400 is what is this so 99 point something is what we can expect so you see accuracy equal to 99.75 Okay, right. So uh, overall, the idea is that this particular uh, whatever uh, method we are using, right? This method gives you an overall accuracy of ninety nine point seven five percent. All right, that's the uh, final conclusion. You can come here, come to this by using a CNN. If you try, uh, if you do a if you train the network and if you do a testing, this is what happens. Okay, now we have, so some of the cases, let, let's assume in this case, we got a good result. 
Okay, so this is fine, right? This is acceptable result. Anything above 90%, we normally consider that as a good, uh, good percentage. Okay, but now you see uh, what happens here is something like uh, sometimes because of the usage of this ReLU layer, right? Uh, ReLU, if, you, if you remember the plot of ReLU, I'll, I'll come back to that. I'll just show you what we discussed when we talked about the ReLU layer. Right. If you remember the ReLU activation function, so how it's going to look like? Do you remember? Sure. Right. So the function is uh, right. It's a zero for all the values lesser than zero, and it is going to be the value itself for any value which is positive. Okay. So whichever is positive, we get value. Right. So now you see whenever the input is negative, right? So we didn't want this to be more negative because it had some problems just to overcome the problems with the sig sigmoid function. Right, we try to make all the values which are on the negative side equal to zero. That is also a problem, actually. Okay, you are completely neglecting your negative inputs. Right, so there is there is a problem. I'll, I'll, I'll write that and we'll look at the solution for that as well. Now it's okay. So, uh there is there is a problem with the normal uh, ReLU layer, so that is what is called as uh, a, uh, it's called as a dead ReLU problem. Just discuss about that, and then we'll find a solution for that also. But in this case, I don't know whether we look at the effect of the solution or this because uh, here we already got a good result, okay? Because it's already ninety nine point seven five. I I doubt whether it will improve or okay. But let me let me discuss about that right now. So that is called as uh, it's a dead It's a dead ReLU problem, right? So uh, this is a specific case when uh, the neural network, convolutional neural network, stops the learning, stops the learning. Because the input to the activation function are below zero. That is actually, it means less than zero always. So, which means what? Whenever you give any input, input is given in such a way that this is the activation function, always the inputs are here. So, what happens to the output? Output is equal to zero always. That's a major problem, correct? Right, because always the input lies lesser than zero. This is zero access. So, that's the problem. This is called as a data ReLU problem. But I actually had a serious problem before that, whenever I had this kind of inputs, right? My, my relationship was a linear function. So that was also, right, uh, a bigger problem for me, right? So what is the solution? The solution is called as, you. it's called as a leaky ReLU function. So the meaning of leaky ReLU is that you don't make it completely zero. You give a very small slope. You don't make it zero, 
you see it's it's a small number not not a larger value like this okay so it's not zero whenever the input is lesser than zero the output will not be equal to zero. are you okay all right so uh let the the solution right the solution is called as the uh, leaky value function okay so what what is the difference right we try to introduce a small uh, slope for the values of input below zero. Right. For all the values which are below zero, we try to. Okay. All right. Right, let's see now. So how to how do you visualize that? First, we'll write a simple uh, function in MATLAB just to visualize that uh, uh, Niki Relu function. I leak it and I'll open a new question. And uh, here, let's uh, right. First, let me create the uh, required space, okay? Required line space. So, what I do is say x is equal to uh, create a linear space starting from maybe minus 10 to plus 10. So this will create uh, a line space, linearly spaced uh, values of distance 1 between minus 10 to 10. So you can also do this as minus 10 colon colon plus 10. Okay, that's also going to work. Right? Then let me define. So first let me say y is equal to x. That actually uh, creates y equal to x straight line. But you see, I want to make a change in y because whenever the y x value is lesser than 0, y value should be, right, should not have the same slope, correct? So what I do, I'll try to make a change. y of, okay, you see what, what, what this does. I, I'm going to use, I'll use my command window to check this. So I want to just write y of y less than 0. I am actually checking a condition inside this. In the sense, show me all the y values, right, whose value is less than 0. How many you expect? Minus 10 to minus 1. Oh, sorry. I think I didn't run this. That's why it is this. So, as of now, let me run. So, that's And I as my mistake, so it's not line space, it's a linear space. So it's lin space. This will be. Okay, yeah. Now I'm going to uh, check that. Show me all the values of y where the value is less than zero. y less than zero. This means I'm expecting MATLAB to show minus 10 to minus 1. Okay, until so starting from minus 10, minus right, like that, that you see. Minus, this is the last number, right, in the linear space, right, which are negative. So, what I want to do here, I don't want the slope to be equal to 1. I want to have a smaller slope. So, what I do, actually, I can do an assignment with this. So, all the values of y, where y is lesser than 0. Uh, 
okay, let me assign. So I don't want to compare. So equal to what you do, right? You perform, right? You don't give it, uh, see, y is equal to m into x what I want, right? But m is nothing but it should be a smaller value. If it is m is equal to 1, y equal to x, right? I don't want that. I want to bring the slope to a smaller value, say 0 0.01. m, y is equal to m into x. So m into, now you see, I want to, if you simply write x, it will take all the x value from minus 10 to 10. I don't want to. I want to do only x where the y value is lesser than 0. So try to understand that, right? There is a conditional statement. Wherever you have y less than 0, only take those x and multiply those x with 0 0.01. You get an answer, assign them to all those y where y less than 0. Are, are you fine with the statement? OK, I'll show you the output now, what exactly is going to happen. So y equal to x, I'll, I'll x comma y, that is my first figure, and I'll do, hold on, right, I make the changes like this, then I plot once again, plot of x comma, okay, let's check. Just a second, I'll show you the output. I'm bringing the output now. This is figure, figure number one. All right, so you can see the blue colored line. Okay, I'll, I'll turn on the grids as well so that uh, we can see exactly what's happening. Okay, now, so because uh, the grids are present, you can see this. So this, the, the, there was a straight line completely like this, which is actually originally with, that is in the blue color. Okay, so that blue colored line represents the y equal to x line. Okay, that was our original, right. Now, the leaky layer, it, the, the result of leaky function is this, the red one, right? I can see, I, I, it looks like the y value is zero, but if I click on that, you can see that there is a y value, right? It's not zero. The height is not zero, right? The y is minus 0 0.07373. It's not zero, right? Because, because of that. Not, so that means you can see it is increasing on the negative side as you move further towards the negative. So you see, it's not zero. Right, you can see that, right? So that means, right, this kind of function where whenever the input value falls on the negative side, you don't make it equal to zero, but you still, you try to give a very small slope to that, right? So that kind of uh, uh, activation function is called a leaky ReLU function, all right? So this is, I just wanted to show you that this is what is a leaky ReLU concept. All right, but let us try to, uh, let me, I, I want to show you that, how do we implement the leaky ReLU, right? Whenever it comes to the map lab, or the, the regular functions, which we try to do. Okay, so what I do now, it's, it's pretty much similar. Uh, I'll just open a new uh, script by the name, ellipse, circle. Uh, it's using CNN, but uh, I'm going to use leaky. Okay, so I'll just move the CNN to the end so that. So that's the name. So you open something. So I don't have to write, make many changes over here. So I can copy this. And I 
Okay, it, it's pretty much similar, uh, only the changes I will show you. So let's start from the beginning. So initially we do the, we clear everything, we go inside the ellipses, we read the ellipses, nothing changes, right? Only the change that you can actually observe is uh, inside our, uh, this thing. Right, only the layers is what I want to change. So here, so we anyway have the input layer, convolutional layer, patch normalized, then, okay, instead of the ReLU layer, it has to be, see the change is the key ReLU layer. Okay, so this is the command, right? So just add, in leaky relu one. Okay, so we then have the max pooling layer. We define the stride, we give a name, that's fine. Move further, convolutional 2D layer, batch normalization. Again, I have a relu layer. So simply replace this by leaky relu layer. Okay, then wherever you see the other one, so I'll just rename this as Leaky Devil. Leaky Devil. Okay. Change this name also to me. That's all. So I don't think we need anything else. Let me check the condition we wrote for the training options also. Yes, you do animation weight patch. Okay, no change required. Then okay, so that's pretty straightforward. What we do now is start from here. Run in advance. Run in advance. Right, you can see. The figure coming up. I'll just show you the figure. It's the same figure, okay? Figure of ellipses. Ellipses and circles will pop up. Then the next one is dividing as per the requirement. And so now create this way and what is shown here is the required Okay, sorry, the created uh, layers. You can see that the leaky relu has <coughs> the leaky relu has been created. Leaky relu one, two, etc. Okay, then so training options will specify and we'll do the training now. So the training will start now. We'll show you the training progress. So training is happening with the same settings as the 
<coughs> previous phase. Okay, previously run non-leaky ReLU function. It looks like the accuracy is going to touch 100%. Uh, validation accuracy is going to touch 100% like the previous case. Or uh, maybe there we, we will see a slight difference because uh, uh, the two column, the these two columns, uh, we see right are close to 100, right? 199, 199 something like that. We are expecting the same thing when it finishes. Okay. Yeah. You can see validation accuracy is 99.94. That's the Final value we see here, right? That's it. Okay. So let's come back to the lab and let's go for the training phase, uh, the test, testing phase. Okay, training is done. So now we are going ahead with the testing. Okay. Uh, yeah, code is written and I don't think any change is required. Directly, let's run this. So you see, it's 99.25. So you can see that because of this ReLU change in the ReLU, you have a change, some change in that. Okay, it's not always it's going to reduce. In our case, it reduced, but right? Uh, whenever you face the uh, TED ReLU problem, right? So what is going to happen? It, if you try to, in, instead of the normal ReLU, if you bring the leaky ReLU in place, right? Uh, slightly, uh, slight improvement in the overall accuracy can be expected. But in this case, it's not that. You can see that by introducing the leaky ReLU, the accuracy is reduced by 0 0.75, right? So actually, I can do one more thing here. Let me change this to, uh, let me multiply this by 100 so that you can see into... Okay, now let's change the section. So it will be in the percentage, right? 99.25, right? So, so there is a change. We can definitely observe the change that is introduced because of converting the normal ReLU into the leaky ReLU, right? So I, I since we did not discuss the concept of le leaky ReLU over there, because I, I, over there I, I could never show you what is it, uh, what do you mean by uh, dead uh, ReLU, etc. Right, but now anyway we know now. So because of which I could introduce you now, and uh, right, we could understand that this is how it's going to work. All right. So uh, that's that's our one mini some small mini project related to the uh, detecting or classification of two different classes, right? Of uh, to classify the objects. Right, so you can definitely bring uh, many other classes. Simply copy that inside the elitus, and you can keep doing. That. Okay, right. Anyway, I'm going to share you share you this uh, whole folder for uh, your reference. Right, you can uh, download, you can run, and right, uh, come back with doubt if any. Okay, so uh, in the next class, I'm going to uh, deal with the, a slightly different problem. Right, uh, where we teach the uh, neural network to fill the sentences right so it's something it's something more practical right so it reads a sentence and if the sentence is not complete we'll try to teach the machine how to complete that sentence okay we'll see that we'll see. okay it's a very interesting problem